Marijuana Nation, if you haven't yet, pop over to mjtodaymedia.com slash survey today and help us understand our audience better. Our survey is super quick, super easy, and again, it can be found at mjtodaymedia.com slash survey. This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, our weekly flagship show, Marijuana Today, as well as the Green Rush and Weed Wonks podcasts, all of which can be found at mjtodaypodcast.com, greenrushpodcast.net, and weedwonks.com. If you're interested in learning how we can help you reach the top audience in legal cannabis, email our business developer, Michael, at michael at mjtodaymedia.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Thursday, August 20th, 2020, and you're tuned in to episode 969 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. We start the news day off up in Canada, where Marijuana Business Daily's Matt Lamers has a good longer form piece up diving into accusations recently raised against the Canadian government that it is engaging in protectionism in its legal cannabis industry by not allowing for other countries to export their own medical marijuana products. Jamaica is one of the nations calling upon Canada to allow for imports with Audley Shaw, the nation's Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, telling Marijuana Business Daily in a statement that the import ban was actually hitting Canadian companies, saying, quote, It appears manifestly clear that the refusal of the Canadian government to allow for the importation of commercial quantities of marijuana from Jamaica is putting the investment of several Canadian investors in Jamaica at risk. In fact, several Canadian investors have already closed down their operations in Jamaica because of this. Unquote. Shaw said his government will be filing a formal appeal over the matter. There have also been calls out of Colombia and Australia, both countries with companies hoping to sell into the Canadian market. Open this one up today for sure. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. Yesterday, I reported that the state of Colorado has been told by the U.S. Department of Agriculture that it needs to make a number of edits to the proposed plan it submitted on how it would govern industrial hemp. Those plans are required now by states, territories, and tribes wishing to open up industrial hemp programs. Kyle Yeager of Marijuana Moments picked up on news that not only was Colorado told to go back to the drawing board with required edits to their plan, but five other states were as well. Again, reasons are not yet clear why the states had their plans sent back. Besides Colorado, California, Oklahoma, Utah, Missouri, and Illinois were all told by the USDA that their proposals fell short of being acceptable. We'll certainly keep an eye on this storyline as it feels like there might be something more here. Kyle has our third top story today as well, jumping to Vermont with a quick update on the storyline of that state's efforts to pass Senate Bill 54, which would allow for the legal sale of adult use products. As we've been covering here recently, Vermont lawmakers are meeting in special session right now, and one of the things being worked on is Senate Bill 54, which is in the hands of a bicameral conference committee. Kyle's update on this one brings the news that there is some conflict among state lawmakers over a provision that Republicans are trying to shoehorn in that would allow police to pull people over for not wearing seatbelts. Democrats rightly point out the unrelated nature of the amendment and the fact that giving police the ability to more easily pull people over for no good reason is a terrible idea. It's not clear how this one will play out, but it's something going on. Another one that might be worth a drop in yourself. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz it in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, MJ Today Media, publishers of this podcast, our weekly flagship show, Marijuana Today, as well as the Green Rush and Weed Wonks podcasts, all of which can be found at mjtodaypodcast.com, greenrushpodcast.net, and weedwonks.com. We've been podcasting now for well over six years, and over that time, have built up the biggest and best audience in legal marijuana. 
The very first episode of our flagship show, Marijuana Today, was published back in July 1st of 2014, just on the heels of Washington State passing legal adult use via ballot measure. We have literally been here for the arc of legal adult use sales, and we have the listenership to match. If you want to put your legal marijuana business, brand, service, or product in front of our tens of thousands of industry insiders and decision makers, then email our new business developer, Michael, who can be reached via email at michael at mjtodaymedia.com. That's michael at mjtodaymedia.com. All right, time for the Blitz. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit just turned down the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration's motion to dismiss a lawsuit seeking the federal reclassification of marijuana. The lawsuit was filed earlier this year by a group of activists, scientists, and military veterans seeking the overturning of marijuana's current Schedule One status, the most restrictive of the federal government's drug ratings. The plaintiffs in the matter contend that it's unconstitutional for marijuana to be so heavily restricted and that the D. DEA is overstepping its legal bounds in so tightly controlling it. This one's packed with nuance and detail, so I'd suggest also adding it to your list of stories to read in full. A Washington state-based marijuana company is suing the state of Oklahoma over its policy of requiring that non-residents of the state own no more than 25% of a cannabis company, with a two-year residency required to go beyond that. That policy has actually been placed on hold by the state over legal worries, but Dank's Wonder Emporium is still pressing ahead with its lawsuit to seek a permanent scuttling of the law. Lawyers for Dank's Wonder Emporium point out that the Federal Commerce Clause requires smooth and easy business between states and that requiring in-state ownership is unconstitutional. Michael Regan at Marijuana Business Daily has an insightful look at how publicly traded stocks in the U.S. and Canada compare in terms of their recent financial performance. I need to drop a couple of quick disclosures here as our sponsor Cureleaf is mentioned, as is Forefront, whose president Chris Crane is a longtime host and regular on our show Marijuana Today. As Michael's piece has it, and as the chart backs up, American marijuana companies have been outperforming their Canadian peers as of late, with U.S.-focused companies as a whole up 15% on average in terms of stock price since last reporting, while Canadian companies are down 8%. Lots more here worth jumping into yourself. The Canadian company Red, White & Bloom just announced that it has closed on a deal to raise $15 million through a public offering underwritten by PI Financial Corp. and 8 Capital. The offering rolls out 20 million units at 75 cents a share and will be used by Red, White & Bloom as working capital and for general expenses. Florida-based operator Sertera Wellness has been ordered by the state's Office of Medical Marijuana Use to recall a batch of its granddaddy purple whole flower for having a higher than acceptable count of dangerous mold. A coalition of four state attorneys general and around 50 current and former law enforcement officials sent a letter yesterday to congressional leaders pressing for the legalization of marijuana. The group Law Enforcement Action Partnership, or LEAP, which organized the effort, addressed their letter to House leaders urging that the MORE Act be passed, which would deschedule marijuana while installing a number of federal social equity provisions. Marijuana Moments has more here, including a copy of of the actual letter sent. Always a good idea to click through to source. Finally for today, we have a bit of good news out of Texas, where yesterday a judge issued a temporary hold on the state's ban of the sale of smokable hemp. We just reported on this one recently as the Texas Department of State Health Services issued regulations last month that bans the sale of hemp flour for the purpose of smoking. Even though state law only forbids the manufacturing of smokable hemp, not the importation and sale. The order issued by Judge Laura Livingston expires on September 2nd when a hearing is scheduled for further deliberation on the matter. This is an interesting storyline to track for sure. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interweb, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. 
Thanks to our sponsor, MGA Today Media, and to our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mgatodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in, starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.